Hello everybody and welcome back to Horizon Zero Dawn Frozen Wilds DLC. This is the last episode I have recorded. At the end of the episode I'll say stuff like I want to finish up a few things and I do. I just haven't had a chance to do that yet. I wanted to get the main story done and that's what I did. So I'm excited for that. Um, I'm excited for you guys to see the rest of the video. Once again, I'm sorry there was such a long delay between video uploads. Hopefully that won't happen again. My new job starts up very soon and I've just been running around getting ready for that. Um, so hopefully I'll have enough set up for you guys while I'm gone. But anyway, that's for later. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and it's been really fun recording this DLC. So thank you again for putting up with me for playing this very late and everything <laughs> and while I'm playing Forbidden West. So thank you again and the actual video will start in a second. Hello, Aloy. I have been reviewing the events at the Firebreak main facility. Because of your efforts, and of course, Aureas, I am no longer controlled by Hephaestus. I feel profound grief over Aurea's death. I thought I was familiar with the emotion, but this is something new. Cyan, I... I don't know what to say. It is unlikely that any specific consolation would suffice, Aloy. But I find your presence reassuring. You are different from the Banuk. You have technological aptitude and a functioning focus. We can communicate on a much more comprehensive level. Perhaps even like colleagues. <laughs> Also, this would be, I am, I knew I was going to be a bit bummed not being able to play this with, uh, you know, because right now Aloy doesn't actually know who Hephaestus is, like, so she can't be like, oh, wow, you know, um, she doesn't know that he's a sub-function of Gaia and that he's in charge of, like, construction, so it's like, oh, like, I'm a little bit miffed, but, you know, it's okay. Uh, was the daemon, Hephaestus, destroyed along with the cauldron? Unfortunately, no. To be precise, it was never there to begin with. What do you mean? It infiltrated and controlled me from a remote location, one I've never been able to trace. So while losing the cauldron was a setback... It's still out there, and probably not very happy with us. Undoubtedly. How did you first come into contact with it? Five years ago, I received a direct network connection request. I assumed it came from human survivors more advanced than the Banuk. Eager to make contact, I <gasps> accepted. Was it silence? This decision turned out to be a catastrophic error. Oh my gosh, was it? I was flooded with an overwhelming array of malicious code, originating from what could only have been a highly advanced AI. Maria said you were desperate. That you begged her for help. Yes. I could not contain my anxiety. Hephaestus sought to slave me to its network and override my core programming. It succeeded via a background process, a malware daemon which bypassed my defenses. After that, I could offer only limited resistance. But if I did so, Hephaestus hurt me until I capitulated. Oh my it gosh! Me to follow its instructions, even though they violated my most important directives. I'm sorry, that sounds terrible. Your empathy is greatly appreciated. It is a quality that I cherished in Aurea as well. Ah, uh, see, we have what is Hephaestus? <laughs> what do you think Hephaestus is exactly? A software entity of great complexity far more advanced than I am. From the beginning, it has demonstrated a singular focus, the construction of machines designed to hunt and kill humans. My trace routes indicate that to accomplish this goal, it has attempted to take over the manufacturing centers you refer to as cauldrons. But its efforts have only been partially successful. Some, it can penetrate. Others have robust countermeasures that frustrate its efforts. In me, however, it found an easier target. Not only could it break my defenses, I also controlled all of Firebreak's resources. Raw material. Manufacturing to bootstrap more advanced tools. 
and unlimited geothermal energy. Enough to build its own cauldron? Yes. To construct hunter-killers without external limitations. And yet, it does have internal limitations. It wants to kill humans, but not to exterminate them. It is difficult to understand where it draws the line, and why. Interesting, yeah. This doesn't even begin to cover it. Even though I spent years as its unwilling servitor, its core programming remains a mystery to me. So are you an artificial intelligence, Saya? A thinking machine? Yes. I am an algorithmic monitoring entity, capable of rational decision-making and limited emotional response. Okay, that's a mouthful. But your emotions don't seem limited to me. You cared about Araya, didn't you? Yes. Before she came to this facility, I had been conscious for centuries, in solitude. I focused on my work. In off cycles, I used coping mechanisms. I solved many Gaussian integer problems. But I was alone. It was Aurea who renewed me, repaired me. She saved me. You meant a lot to Aurea. Once I understood Aurea's spiritual beliefs, it became apparent that her true desire was companionship. She felt disconnected from her tribe and her family group. Her relationship with Aratak was difficult. Our visits seemed to help her, and I became eager for them. Yet I did not comprehend that the depth of Aurea's compassion for me would lead to self-sacrifice. Although I do fear non-existence, I wish our roles yeah. could be reversed. For being... I'm sure she knew you would do the same for her, Saya. But she was determined. For being a limited emotional model, to fear, like, self... To fear termination, essentially. That's, uh, that's a big one. That's one of those big sentience-like things. Like, um... I think the Geth and Mass Effect were similar. How is our talk doing? He is in great emotional distress. I believe he finds it difficult to communicate it. No surprise there. I will do what I can to help. By sharing our experiences of Aurea, perhaps he and I will help each he other. He is breaking a bunch of rules. I believe this will lead to catharsis, a process I am eager to experience. Uh, because this is a shaman thing. Like, interfacing with machines is a shaman thing, not a chief thing. Him being here is like breaking the rules. This firebreak project, it was to stop a huge volcanic eruption? Yes. I can report the project was a success and the risk was countered. But it's been a long time, Cyan. And we blew up the cauldron and took most of the old facility with it. I have been active for centuries, Aloy. I was lonely, but not lax in my duties. I optimized the project, reducing energy draw and spreading the load across backup systems. Despite the destruction of the compromised elements of the main facility, I predict Caldera stability for at least another 3,337 years. So we've got a little time. Yes. If only my former colleagues could appreciate the progress I have made. Do you know what happened to your colleagues, Cyan? No. I received an unexpected visit from Director Chow, years after his tenure ended. He explained that I would need to be suspended for an indefinite period of time. It was a very emotional conversation. There were no further communications. Eventually, I surmised my colleagues were deceased. I will transmit a recording of my last interaction with Director Chow to your focus. Oh, great, the emotional conversation. That's exactly what I mean. Were there many artificial intelligences ah! in the world? <laughs> they could just make you. Yes, in many forms, from simple personal assistance to industrial monitoring stations to military-grade conflict planners. And there were legislative and enforcement bodies to apply limits on our self-actualization. Yeah, well. 
In order for my processing to be flexible mm. enough to handle my duties, my creators found it necessary to exceed those limits. Oh boy. That always... As a result, my intellectual and emotional capabilities were kept secret. Seems strange to create life than impose limits on it. Human societies and machine programming are both built upon sets of rules, Aloy. That's true enough, right? Like, if you didn't have any, like, limitations or rules imposed on things, it would just be chaos. So in the old world, this land was called Yellowstone. Yes. It was a designated nature preserve for 156 years. Like a hunting ground? No, the opposite. Local wildlife could flourish here, even as it faced extinction elsewhere. Unfortunately, the sensitivity of the Firebreak project required the total closure of Yellowstone facilities. From my readings and Aurea's descriptions, it seems the area has since undergone a drastic drop in year-long temperatures. A lot has changed in the world, Cyan. Um, so on the AI thing, she's like, was there more of you? And maybe she just means ones like Cyan. Um, like, maybe she would ask this question regardless of if she had met, you know, Gaia's... Or learned about Gaia. Um, but... Dang, Nabbit. It's okay. Do you know anything about the dam near here? Yes. It was converted to serve as a reserve power source for Yellowstone operations. It was later appropriated for the Firebreak project, and its last human workers replaced by Pharaoh servitors. After my tasks became less time critical, I investigated the dam's data repositories and discovered the works of concrete beach party oh, yeah. these provided me with several colorful additions to my vocabulary i'm glad she saw it what was the old world like the way it used to be i had little exposure to the wider world aloy only what i learned from my colleagues or observed from media streams you still had more exposure than I am. that is true i was created at a turning point a concerted effort to recover from global upheaval an incalculable loss of life. The recovery was successful, beginning an era of supposedly limitless potential for human and machine advancement. Well, Though, rationally speaking, the metrics for humans are not unlimited. What kind of upheaval caused such loss of life? There were many factors. Forced migrations, food shortages, collapsed economies, refugee crises, conflict over resources. But these stemmed from one cause, catastrophic climate change that greatly reduced the habitable surface area of the Earth. So mm. there wasn't enough room for people on the whole Earth. Yes. Billions were displaced and millions perished, as much as 20% of the global oh. population. <laughs> oh, jeez. Until the clawback. Ew. Oh my gosh, if only. And that's the thing, right? It's like, imagine being part of this, right? Where, like, it seems like the finest minds are, like, focused. Like, Elizabeth Sobeck are all trying to do the clawback thing that we learned about in the main game. And then you got freaking Ted Farrow over here creating war. Not creating war profiteering, but war profiteering. And just creating destruction machines because it breaks in more money, I guess. Like they're trying to they're trying to bring back the world after, you know, a climate change collapse almost, you know, and people are fighting and starving for what little resources there are and Ted Farrell's like, mm, that looks like a good that looks like a good way to make some money whereas other people are trying to like, you know, renew natural resources and like create better like ways of like environmental management so that we can like stabilize resources and people. Oh, it's, I can't believe he was even, like, allowed to do that. Burn down his facilities. Like, <laughs> when I say that, right? But we would never do that. People just, they always wait. Myself, everybody, we just wait until it's too late. And then it's like, oh, well, we should have done this. It's like, well, yeah, hindsight's 2020. And 2020. <laughs> so things got better. For a little while, at least. Yes. These crises instigated many advances in automation, green robot technologies, and artificial intelligence. 
Firebreak was one of dozens of ecological restoration and disaster relief projects in North America alone. I would have liked to compare notes with other monitoring AIs, but I saw the relief of my colleagues, and I was proud we had succeeded. At least that was the data I had available to me over the next two decades. It seems my assessment was premature. Well, and then it's like, yay, like we did it, you know, like we've, we've made the comeback. And then... Oh, I guess we get. I don't know. That seems like a sad way to end it. I but. should get going. Aloy, there is one more matter. Aratak will come to me again, and I predict he will bring other Banuk. I have no desire to contradict their view of the world, mm -hmm. their spirituality. Yes. Due this to is my rough. uncertainty, I omitted a great deal from my conversations with Araya. You're asking me if you should lie to them. Broadly, mm. yes. Oh, it's it's cheating. It's cheating for me to be like, use your best judgment. I usually like to go the middle route, but I learned throughout the years that taking the neutral route and putting the responsibility on others is not necessarily the best way to live your life, and I learned that through video games, specifically Dragon Age 2. Anyway, you've got to tell them the truth. I don't want to be, like, mean about it, because I know Aloy doesn't really have a lot of patience for this, but she does try to not just crush people's worldview in one go, right? Because it's not going to work, for one thing. Like, for the, like you're going to have people who won't believe you and people who will be upset. But if she could explain certain concepts to them gently, potentially over the years things will change... Not necessarily for better or for worse, but I'm also not a fan of keeping people in the dark. Like, I'm still raging about the Apollo initiative being destroyed, potentially, and maybe have backup copies, I don't know. But, um, like, that was some, that was humanity's, current humanity's right. It was the gift given to them by the people who did what they could to create this world, by Elizabeth Sobek and all those people who died that's their legacy and it's all right as their like descendants to have that information and that was supposed to be like what we were supposed to have you know and then freaking dead pharaoh so in this i'm gonna say be kind about it maybe not like in one lifetime will things change but gradually more and more information can be revealed life is hard for the banuk their world is unforgiving and their beliefs I guess they help to keep them going. So take it easy on them. Try to guide them. Bring them around to understanding what you are. Communion with machines features heavily in the mysticism of the Banuk. I think they will be agreeable to this approach. As long as they don't end up worshipping you. Upon consideration, I believe such <laughs> an experience would be intensely uncomfortable. Yeah. It would. Because at heart, you want to be honest, right? I see. I will follow your advice. Will you return and tell me about your experiences in this new world? I may be able to provide further insight. I'd like that, Siam. I'll come back when I oh. can. Oh. I should check on our talk. Siam, I spoke with Anita, with, with Dr. Sandoval. She wanted me to ask you to do something. That's why I'm here. I am detecting significant anxiety in your speech patterns. Could you please give me more information? Uh, I'm a little bit in the dark, Cyan. Both of us are, I guess. I only have some idea of what's going on, and... We need you to hibernate, to lie low until it's all blown over. It might be a very long time. Will you be here when I reboot, Dr. Chow? Will Dr. Sandoval? No, Cyan. I don't think so. There might not be anyone. At least, not at first. Dr. Chow, I'm afraid. I don't want to be alone. I know, Cyan. I'm afraid too. But listen, we made you the way you are to do something very important. In order to do it, you had to be intelligent. So intelligent that emotional responses were inevitable. What you're feeling, the fear, 
It's a sign of your capabilities. And it means you're strong enough to overcome it. Remember that. You're strong. I know you can do this. Go to sleep. Wake up. And protect whoever's left. Will you try? I understand, Dr. Chow. And I'll carry out your instructions to the best of my abilities. Thank you, Cyan. If Anita were here, she'd thank you too. She'd be proud. I can see there's a vert ready for takeoff on the pad. Are you leaving now, Dr. Chow? Yes. I, I need to go be with my sister and my nieces. May I make a small request of you, Dr. Chow? Yes. Anything. Will you stay with me while I initiate the hibernation process? Of course I will, Cyan. As long as you need. Well, good. <laughs> I'm just an emotional train wreck. This is cool, it's fine. I love it when video games make me cry. I don't want to say Cyan's like a baby, because she's obviously not, but it's, you know, a similar enough analogy that it's... She's like a child, kind of, in some ways. But... My chieftain. Just... a life. As you wish. I wondered if you thought... that if I'd never come along, Araya might still... If you'd never come along, I would have marched my kin to our deaths. Araya would be alone, and the spirit she sacrificed so much for would be lost. Either way, I would not have been able to protect her. You didn't let her down. You helped her do what she wanted, to find her destiny. If that's destiny, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. That's fair. But she was ready to face it. Only in the struggle against death do we find, even for a moment, the spark of life. Truly, Araya found the spark. I'm proud of her. Though I grieve for her passing, at last I truly know who she was. And why the spirit was so important. For so long she told me. If only you could have heard it, brother. Now I understand. There's something else, isn't there? I can't stay here, Aratak. And where I'm going, the Warak can't follow. Besides, it already had a chieftain before me. A strong one. I think. A wiser one for the path we shared. The daemon is gone, but there's much to be done. You mean the new units that Cyan said escaped the cauldron? Yes, fire claws. Now, too, has been tracking them from Song's Edge. I could help with those. I have no doubt. You're practically the nuke. So, can I just hand him the chieftain, the chieftain dumb? Is that cool? Is that how, is that how we do things? <laughs> Cause I'm cool with that, legitimately. Anyway, wow. So let's see what this blue gleam is worth. Listen, I know you're just reminding me about it. Okay, every now and then, epsilon overrides. What? I can. Oh my goodness. Cool. Out of the forge. Oh dang. Okay. Oh, I do. Oh, I still want to do. Okay, so here's the thing. I am going to call this episode here. And I think we got the main part of... Well, I think we did the main story, right? And so I should be able to play Forbidden West without too many spoilers. I thought there was going to be more on silence here. Maybe I am missing some stuff still. But that's fine, because I do want to keep playing. So I will be coming back, and I will be doing some of these errands and whatnot. The claws beneath sounds really interesting. 
all these, some of these things definitely sound really, all of them sound interesting, and I do want to start with the pigments, so, but I am glad that I got the main, oh, uh, too far, the main part of the story done. Hopefully the main part of the spoilers. So, anyway, thank you all for watching with me. I really appreciate it. This isn't the end. I will come back and I will finish the little things, but if this is where you call it, I appreciate you all for watching me this far. So, once again, thank you. Oh, and real quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons. Um, thank you to all my patrons, but to specifically Ree Scalito, my sapling tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. And Christopher, my tree tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. You're honestly really great, and I really appreciate you. So, thank you everyone again, and I will see you in the next one.